Namaste. So last time we talked about the Shirovrata. And actually I made a mistake, which nobody caught, huh? as usual. <laughs> I said the Shirovrata, Shira means fire. But it's actually, the meaning of Shira is head. Huh? Putting the three lines on the forehead. This is the Shirovrata, or actually part of the Shirovrata. The complete Shirovrata means that you uh, smear these ashes, the dry ashes, all over your body. And then you put on the 12 places of the body, you put the three lines of Shiva. So let's make that clear, okay? Uh, Shirovrata means the whole process. But the word shira means head. So, mea culpa. <laughs> anyway, you might think this is some sectarian or external thing. But the scriptures praise it so much that it's hard to take that point of view. If you believe in the scriptures. Now, most people these days give lip service to the scriptures, but don't actually follow them. But we actually follow, and we have found nothing but a benefit in following these instructions. I'll give you an example. Uh, I used to have a lot of problems with the skin infections. And this was because a long time ago, I had a failed root canal, and the uh, infection got established and later on it spread all over my body through the nervous system and the lymph. So for a long time I've had this eczema coming out all over my body and I had, there was really nothing I could do about it unless I wanted to get heavily into antibiotics, which is not an option for me. So until I started Basma, then when I started putting Basma all over my body, this, this whole thing miraculously cleared up. And this was a chronic infection that had gone on for years. Uh, so, Basma works. It also has made the inner light that I see during meditation much, much clearer and stronger. Now, what is going on here exactly? Uh, the body is being purified. Basma is extremely astringent. What that means is that it pulls the poisons out of the skin. The skin is an excretory organ amongst its other functions. It gets rid of poisons that have been kept or stored in other parts of the body. And in this way, they come out and they get cleansed. But when the amount of poisons is more than the skin can handle, then it collects in the internal organs and causes some real problems. So the uh, astringent action of the ashes pulls the poisons out. And that's why one puts these lines in the places where the body excretes sweat, oil, and other things, like behind the ears. Uh, or in the ears, or around the base of the neck. All these places, like places where you sweat at night, are the body trying to get rid of poisons. So you put the ashes on there, and then you sleep, and the ashes actually pull the poison out of the body. That's a very mundane explanation. <laughs> the real explanation, <laughs> what's going on behind that, is given in the Vedas, the original four Vedas. This Shirovrata is like the blazing fire in wholly destroying the forest of sins. 
All knowledge flashes before him who performs this Shirovrata. So this is from the Atarva Veda. And Atarva Veda is known to be extremely esoteric. All the difficult, deep, and hard to understand truths are given in Atarva Veda. So this is one of them. And you see in South India especially, the old style traditional people wear the Tripundra. Uh, the modern new age people don't so much. They're following the Western ways. And because of that, they're afflicted by the Western diseases. But one who wears these ashes, according to Vedas, burns up the sins like the fire burns the forest. And so we've also had experience of that in the last couple of years. <laughs> So the Shruti, the Veda, also declares this is to be done daily. This is part of the daily routine of every Brahmana. And there's a mantra. Fire is ashes, water is ashes, earth is ashes, air is ashes, space, akasha, is ashes. All this manifest universe is ashes. So this mantra from the Atarva Veda is to be recited before putting on the Basma Tripundra. And why is that? Because in the end of this universe, when Shiva does his Tandava Nritya, his dance of destruction, then all of the universal elements, all of the Tan Matras, all of the uh, Tatras are burned to ashes. And at the end, there's nothing left but ashes. Huh? Ashes to ashes, the Bible says. Dust to dust. So this whole material creation is actually nothing but dust. It's nothing but ashes. And the miracle of the creation is that this becomes a vehicle for life, for consciousness, for all kinds of activity, including the drama of salvation which is the real purpose of the creation. The devotee is to put on these ashes named Shirovrata during his Sandhyopasana, practicing Sandhya three times a day, so long as Brahma Vidya, realization of Brahman, does not arise in him. So one is supposed to make a vow. That's why it's called Shirovrata. Vrata means a vow, a promise to God that I'm going to do this practice. Huh? My shirovrata is, I'm going to do this practice for the rest of my life. Every day I'm going to put this out. I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say behind my back, because huh? nobody tries to argue with me to my face. <laughs> they know they're going to get smashed. <laughs> because everything I'm saying comes from scriptures. I don't deviate from the scriptures. I don't speculate on the scriptures. I simply report what is there. And then I put all that knowledge together into a model that I call the esoteric teaching. And so by ontological analysis, we have put together this esoteric teaching by finding the, the best pieces of wisdom here and there throughout all the Vedic scriptures and the Buddhist scriptures. And this has taken many years, but it's all there for those who come to our course site. Uh, so anyway, this is to be done as a regular daily practice, three times a day. That means, that's why the name Sandhyopashana. Sandhya means the three uh, junctions of the day between night and morning, between morning and afternoon, and between afternoon and night. So in other words, at sunrise, noon, and sunset. Then the upasana is a form of worship. Now whatever your practice is, whatever your style of worship is, whoever your deity is, uh, or whatever type of meditation you're doing, it should be done at these three times of the day. That's the instruction given in all the shastras. Even the Muslims follow this, you know? They, go, they have five times a day. But three of those times 
are the same times as the Sandhupasana. So this is a universal instruction. It's good for everyone. And I follow it strictly. I take three baths a day. I put on the Tripundra three times a day. And it's having an effect. I can feel it. Now this is not just a, a joke, you know. This isn't just to make you look funny or to fit in with the social expectations in a religious place. This is because it really does something. It really works. And why? Who gets to do this? Who gets to observe this vow? What is the karma that leads to this blessing of purification? One who performs one's own dharma for many births acquires particular faith in this shirovrata. Others can have no faith in this. Rather, they get animosity for this vrata because of the abundance of ignorance in them. So, swadharma means the particular religious rules and regulations that apply according to your situation in life. Whether you are a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaisha, or Shudra, according to your consciousness and your work, as Bhagavad Gita says, not necessarily according to birth. Although most people who are born, for example, in a Brahmana family will have Brahminical inclination, whether they actually act on that inclination and become qualified is a choice they have to make. Otherwise, they become Brahma Bandhu, which means simply a friend of a Brahmana. A real Brahmana is one whose life is dedicated to realizing Brahman. So the, a person who is on that platform is not going to take any job. Uh, maybe they run a business, a very small pocket business, huh? just to get the bare minimum necessary to survive. Like when I was, in, when I was a householder, when I had a, a business, I had a business doing technical writing for, t for tech companies. And it was basically just me. Me, my computer, and my checkbook. <laughs> that was the business. So it was a minimal business. And there are many, many nice stories of devotees who had very, very small business, very tiny income. They made just enough to survive. But what they were really doing their whole life was the spiritual practices. That was their main engagement. So one should be like that. Then he can be accepted as Brahmana. He's in the mode of goodness, uh, the sattva guna. But one who is rushing here and there and doing all kinds of business deals and working very hard and trying to get this and get that and go here and there and so on. And so on. This is a person in the mode of passion, especially somebody who takes up service. If anybody takes a job, that's the mode of ignorance. That's Shudra, you see? So in our world today, 99.9% .9 of everybody is simply Shudra. Even these big government leaders and people like that, they're just taking a job. They're being paid for what they do. They don't have any Brahminical qualification. They don't have any scriptural knowledge. They dress like Westerners. They eat like Westerners. huh? They act like Westerners means meat eaters. So there's no Brahminical qualification. Don't kid yourself. The real Brahminical qualification, as I said, is that one dedicates his whole life to realizing Brahman. Everything else comes after. So that kind of a person who performs that kind of Dharma for many lifetimes becomes qualified to have faith in the Shirovratta. Others who are covered by ignorance can't. That's their karma. That's what they signed up for. That's why they're in this material world. Not to realize Brahman, but to have some other interest. So if they put on the Tripundra, you'll, you'll see, huh? the, the people who put on Tripundra simply as an external show, put it on very neat. Huh? Maybe the, I don't know how they do it. Maybe they use a ruler, you know, <laughs> or a stamp. 
<laughs> and it's all very neat, you know, and the lines are exactly symmetrical and you know, everything. That's not the real thing. Huh? It's meant to be put on very generously, you know, and the lines are like almost an afterthought. The main thing is that the, these three fingers, huh? actually in this scripture, we'll get, to the, we'll get to these details later, how to put on the three lines. They say that the middle finger and ring finger should be used to put the first two lines and the thumb should be used to put the third line in the opposite direction. So we'll get into all of this and how it's supposed to be done according to the scriptures huh? in the later episodes of this series. Meanwhile, know that if you can have faith in this Shiro Brata, it means you've been a pious person for many, many lives. And so all blessings to you. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung.